When I first found the music, it wasn't just about the song or the band. It was about the journey, who you were with, and how you felt. I'm milling about with Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams. He's up here, I think. She's down there. And uh, <laughs> where, where, where are we in the world? Where is everybody? Well, I'm in Peckerwood Point, Tennessee, and Larry is in Bearsville, buried in snow. Yeah. How much snow did you get, Larry? We got like um, a ton. Where, where are you, Robin? We're in uh, Queens. Okay, so so double that ton. And <laughs> I think that's where we are. It took me three hours to just shovel a path around the house today, so. Oh man, no snow in Tennessee, right? No, you know, we're like 10 miles south where the temperature drops like just two degrees. And we just, when I was growing up, we had great snow and even more when my parents were growing up, but it's not so much anymore. We'll get some, but not not like Bearsville. I know. I love Bearsville. Are you near Todd Rundgren's place, Larry? Yeah, about uh, eight minutes. About oh, now. very, very cool. It's yeah. beautiful up in Woodstock. You guys must, must really miss each other, though. When was the last time you actually hugged? I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, about it's been... three, four weeks ago. Yeah, well, I was down there for Christmas, um, you know, for a couple of weeks. Um, but it's been sporadic since since July. Basically, Teresa's been down there, and I've I've come and gone as I could, you know. But it's um, this is getting old. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready to be together, you know. I hear you. I hear you. But you're being safe. Yeah, this is. But this is important. She needs to be there. There's no getting around it, you know. This the, is this is one of those life moments where I'm so so grateful to be present and be able to show up for my family. I I just it's it's not easy, but I'm grateful every day. And Larry's doing everything he can to make it easy. You know, make it work to make it work. Yeah. Yes. Now that you bring up your family, your parents are the cutest. I'm yeah. I'm in love. Uh, I mean, that whole that whole front porch episode on It Was the Music, which is, of course, the, ep the episodic streaming show that you guys are a part of on fans. That was just so adorable. I loved it. That's the tip of the iceberg, Robin. My yeah. mother is a pistol yeah. and she was on good behavior. <laughs> Oh really? <laughs> yeah, she you yeah, you 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 should see her in full action someday, man. She's she's a pistol. Yeah. I come by it honestly. <laughs> did were she, you uh, did you ever think to do like a family kind of musical project? Um my father what had a little trio that he did. My mother played piano, which I think is a bone of contention for her to this day because she is a great voice. I mean, they're both aged, you know, so you're seeing the 85 year old, well, they're 80, I don't know what, 83 in that film, but um, so they're, they're aged, you know, and um, not singing regularly probably. And we used to sing, you know, every night at home. And he had a little trio um, with the, the song leader. It wasn't called the choir director. There was no choir. It was the song leader at church who looked exactly like Aunt B from uh, Andy Griffith, exactly. <laughs> and he had a trio with her and her daughter and my mother played piano, but my mother never said anything, but I think she's too, very wounded that he had somebody besides her sing alto. Um, and then he, when he retired, he had a little group called the Peckerwood Pickers and they would play all the local events and whatever. So, um, yeah, so, but not, um, I mean, we would do things at church together, but yeah. I was a soloist when I, they taught me to be, I know I sang, for, I mean, I guess four years old was my first public appearance at church. Um, probably Jesus Loves Me. I don't know, I remember them standing me up on top of this thing so they could see me at the church. So I kind of don't ever remember not doing that in public, but we didn't do it together so much until we were adults and Larry and I would go down and, and now we do as a family. Of course, that's not gonna happen so much because you know Alzheimer's has hit our family pretty heavily. So yeah, that's a long-winded answer, sorry. It Fine, fine. Larry, what about you? What, uh, do you come from a musical family? Tell me a little bit about that. 
Well, my father was a really good singer. You know, he he loved singing, and he would just burst into song. You know, whenever the mood hit him, and um, had a great ear for harmony, which uh, that always intrigued me. And I, I, um, you know, he sort of instilled that in me. And um, and I remember, you know, when I was a young kid growing up in this small apartment, my there was, music was on, was being played constantly. Um, and, he, and all different types of music. You know, my mother was, uh, she had this incredible record collection, everything from, uh, from, um, from like the Harry Smith collection to um, the Weavers, uh, Woody Guthrie, all the way through Broadway show tunes and Frank Sinatra, Frank Sinatra, Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra, <laughs> Frank Sinatra you know? um, and, Me too. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> and um, so I was, you know, I had a I had a really deep appreciation for music, and I felt it really deeply. Uh, but I didn't understand uh, my place in the world with music until I saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. Then I understood it all. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that'll do it. That'll do yeah, it. Yeah. What I love about this this show is your love story. Yeah. And. I want to know, did David Keith actually set you guys up, the actor? No, no, he, no, no, he, no. no, no. Knew him. We, it was one of those crazy, really crazy things. Uh, yeah. Larry, P Michael Simmons, a journalist, um, and his father used to own National Lampoon, Larry? Yeah, yeah. Lampoon. Yeah. And 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 uh, he, he was a friend of a friend, and he, he's the one who uh, found heard my little tape, and I needed a band right away for this thing we were doing at the bottom line. And he um, uh, knew Larry, and they moved in the same circle, and he put that little band together for me, which, of which Larry was one, and um, and then Larry brought John Leventhal into that band, but um, just a one off, one off, uh, but. Michael Simmons really brought us together. And then I would go with Michael and sit in where Larry was playing the, in the next year um, at a little Irish pub um, on, was it third or second, Larry? Avenue. Second Avenue. Second. Olani's. They had yeah. regular music, live music. Which and I would go and sit in there. It was the one on the east side on second Avenue between 40, 48th and 49th, I think it was. It's oh. not there anymore. I don't think yeah. it's there anymore. Yeah. Um, but but uh, that's how we got together. And then when Larry, we finally had a first date. It took us forever because we were both traveling, whatever. And uh, when we finally did have the first date, he picked me up. At, David, I think he tells us in the series, bought me my plane ticket, to, my plane ticket to New York um, because I'd finished school and that was next on the agenda, but I just wasn't getting up there. And, right. and so, yeah, I, I, was, I was irritated that David knew Larry before I did. He's like my brother and so is his sister. They're like my own family. And it was a sibling rivalry thing that he knew him before I did. <laughs> Well, it's kind of, in a way, it's kind of faded, right? Like that he was yeah. a part of both of your lives and yeah. that you didn't really know it. Yeah, it's true. And and so when I picked her up at, at Debbie's apartment, they were they were talking about um, the, the film Gulag, which um, and talking about it like um, and she kept mentioning David. I said, oh, do you know David Keith? And, she, and uh, Debbie said, oh, yeah, that's my brother. And because um, I had worked a year or so before that with David, he was doing a record with, uh, uh, his solo record with Rick Derringer was producing and Rick brought me in to, uh, to do this and we hit it off great. And we had met at these clubs before then, you know. Did he but I hadn't it? seen him since. Yeah, and um, uh, I really loved the guy, you know. And, and, and um, then I find out at that moment that Teresa's, that he's practically like family to, Teresa and uh, and he's been a big part of our lives ever since you know so. his daughters are goddaughter yeah 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 wow um I actually know a producer and I know you come from the Broadway world Teresa and I actually know a producer who did Officer and a Gentleman in Australia as a musical wow. as a musical Where are you kidding no wow it, well yeah, it's they, pretty cool I never quite made it into the Broadway world. I thought I was going to New York to do Shakespeare and, you know, I would never have even had to go to school because um, 
I'm ending, I've done, I'm doing now for a living what my parents taught me in the living room. So all of my, I love, I love theater. I deeply love uh, the whole acting profession and um, theater. But yeah, if I was ever, if I did any musical stuff, it was, it was country musical about a mountain woman. And I played the mountain woman and, or, you know, they might have music. You had to play guitar or whatever, or, um, you know, I could chink on mandolin enough to get by and the little, yeah. So it was a kind of pretty, pretty different experience for me than, yeah, I didn't quite have the voice to play, uh, you know, the, um, the soprano in Carousel or something was not going to be me, no. Who <laughs> 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 right. So now uh, the, uh, the big gist of this uh, documentary, it was the music is that you actually decide that you're going to go on this tour together. As, yeah. as as married for how long already? How long have you married? Are you married? It, now is by the by the time. Oh, well, this is complicated, but it, you better get this right. Yeah, when when we we're now married thirty one years. When when um, when we did our first or or set out to do our first record as and and to consider ourselves uh, an act was uh, we had been married about 20 years at that point. Um, I mean, you know, always talked about it. I mean, we, for the decade before that, though, we were work, working in, in, in with Levon, you know, and that was, I had, I just Is came- Is this his studio behind me? That's right, that's I right. I thought that's so. His drum, that's his drum kit right there. Good and, choice, um, Robin. I knew I liked you. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, I had just come, I came off the road with Bob Dylan uh, in 05. Teresa came off the road with some, with the, uh, she had been playing. Uh, the Carter family uh, thing. The Carter family, uh, um, um, play about the Carter family. We were both home together. Uh, I had jumped off this big ship, you know, the Bob Dylan tour and wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. A week later, two weeks later, I get a call from Levon. Hey, I heard you left Bob. Why don't you come up here and make some music? And, um, that's and, a good uh, imitation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not bad. And, and that, through a series of fortunate events, uh, that kicked off the best 10 years of music making in both of our lives. And Teresa and I were able to, after having been having these disparate careers for most of our marriage, we were, we were making music together every week, every time, you know. And from there, it turned out, we end up working together with Hot Tuna, working together with Phil Lesh, working together with Little Feet, doing these things. If they wanted me, they wanted her, you know? And um, uh, boy, it was great. It's been great. And so so when we finally lost Levon, uh, you know, I guess we just decided, well, let's see what we got here, you know? And uh, and, and you certainly don't hold back on how unglamorous the road is. <laughs> Right. Sorry for bursting anybody's bubble out there yeah, who's about right. to start out. Do it anyway. Yeah, right. Yeah. It is unglamorous. I mean, even at the highest level, it's unglamorous. You know, it's it's work. It's trudge. It's it's a different place every night. It's uh it's uh disruption every day, you know. Um um touring with Bob Dylan, you know, that's top shelf touring, but but it it's it's uh it's tedious, and and the, um, the 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 two hours on stage makes it all worthwhile. I mean, that's that's why you're doing it, you know. But, yeah. Um, and then Teresa and I touring together, you know, we're not on the Bob Dylan level, so we're doing. Uh, uh, it was like we started a mom and pop at sixty or whatever, however right, old we were. Right. Yeah, Robin, it was like we started a mom and pop with all you know the full focus that that requires and the hours that requires. Uh, yeah, we kind of started what like at twenty somethings, the way twenty somethings should be doing it. Yeah, yeah. That's but, what you do for uh, for love, for all reasons, love of the music and love of your partner. That's. I know, and then to bring those two things together, how gorgeous! Really. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've said it over and over again. You know, I've had some incredible musical experiences in my life, but this, the thing we do together, is is 100% fulfilling. Whereas before, as great as the music might have been, there was always something missing because if I was doing this great 
tour, these, playing with these great people, she wasn't there. So you're missing something, you know? And, and um, uh, this, we're playing our music, we're doing it together, and, uh, and uh, it's, it's every, every reason you want to be uh, an artist is being fulfilled. And there's actually a soundtrack available now from yeah yeah how exciting tell us about that it's pretty good too i have to say i really because we're not the only people on it you know it's um yeah I, I was really happy when i heard it like out of context and just like pulled up on spotify or whatever i didn't say that word um uh but just to hear it out of like oh is this bit okay or the horns too loud here or whatever to to have just randomly like come across it was really i really like it i have to say they did a good job so tell me about some of those uh some of the tracks that that you had the most fun recording oh, larry <laughs> <laughs> um you know uh we see you in the recording studio a lot yeah, um, it's, but the, the, the live, the soundtrack album for this thing is, is all live, uh, live stuff that we didn't I even realize was being recorded at the time. You know, uh, it's just stuff our manager, Mark McKenna and Mark Moskowitz, the filmmaker, culled from the, from the movie um, and, and mixed and put on the soundtrack, you know. Um, uh, the, um, but there's, there is... Um, film of of us making our last record together in there and and um which was you know mostly a great experience there's um there's one episode which i'm not very proud of where i just kind of, <laughs> the uh the pressure my own self-imposed pressure really got to me and i i was deep down in a hole and wasn't quite sure how to get out of it and teresa happened to be there with the camera that they lent her and um... it was a, it was a fluke. I mean, he never explodes like this. I'll just say he's very long fuse and he's a very deep well, and he just doesn't um, those that it's a very rare, very rare occurrence. And uh, I was trying to film. I just walked by the stairs go down and your head is level with his feet and knees operating the pedal steel and that's such an odd instrument and all the i don't know how your brain even makes all that happen at once so i thought wow I, we don't have any i i in my life don't have this of larry doing this so i was just filming his feet and his knees operating the levers and the pedals of the pedal steel and uh, that's what he was playing the day I met him. And I was like, how could we not have this on video already? So I happened to have the camera and shooting it. And uh, he was really struggling with this part, as he said, self-imposed um, stress and, and his own level of perfectionism. And he just erupted. And I, I guess I just left the camera rolling. Uh, Those are the best parts, man, where you just like, guess, see the behind yeah. the behind the scenes, right? Yeah, there's a lot it was of that a fluke. in this film. Yeah. It was a fluke, yeah. <laughs> but hearing her, I, thought, well, I write a song and then hear, when she gets comfortable singing it and hearing her voice interpret that song, there's nothing like it. Yeah. <laughs> when, I, 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 when you asked the question, you know, about which songs we enjoyed recording the most with this, I was confusing it because we have a live record that's We've been completed for a year and a half, Larry, and we yeah. it should be out this year because of how things have fallen out. It's just been ready to go out, but um, but I was just remembering. So, like, there's a Peggy Lee tune on there, which is wildly fun to do. That we did at Levon's. Uh, we did that live performance for this record two nights at at Levon's with just our band, and mm. and that's uh, anyway. I was confusing the two live things with that so gotcha yeah. what well, the the very 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 first song that you wrote together was it surrender to love is that was that the first song um now larry's doing the writing robin i'm not gonna i i, I might run it up the red flag pole for you know truth and authenticity critic yeah. take but but he's doing the writing he he was writing before i met him um as a matter of fact, that was, you know, a very romantic thing to hear 
songs like Down on My Knees um, by him before I, yeah, when we were just dating, yeah. Uh, the first song I wrote specifically for Teresa was uh, Did, you, Did You Love Me At All from our first record. And um, uh, that- And Levon used to sing backgrounds with us for that. He, I mean, yeah, he would, he yeah. would sit with the mandolin and um, sing with us yeah. when we did that in the shows. What a treat. Yeah. Oh, I bet. What yeah. inspired that song? That doesn't sound very romantic, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was, I was exercising an old relationship, you know, but, um, uh, and that's over and done with. So, uh, you know, I have moved on. Thank you, Teresa. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You guys are probably the most famous amongst in your sphere of artist friends. Like you are friends with Roseanne Cash and you know Jackson <laughs> Brown. And I, it's it's like mind boggling to me. Yeah. You know? They're, it's a class, those people are class acts and I'm, I'm grateful to know them. Yeah, they're every single They're beautiful, world. they're beautiful, just, Wonderful people, wonderful people. Yeah, uh, Jackson Brown. And musicians, obviously. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jackson Brown is, I, I just have so much admiration for that guy. He's always been a guy that that walks the talk and talks the walk, you know, and um, uh, aside from being a ridiculous talent and, you know, Jackson, David Bromberg and uh, Amy Lou, you know, Everybody, mm. everybody doesn't like something, but nobody doesn't like Emmy Lou. That's <laughs> I I saw I saw Jackson Brown and Emmy Lou Harris at the Beacon Theater performing oh. together. Oh, oh that is not a stick. There you go, there you go, and yeah. um, and of course Roseanne. What you know? What a great person and uh, 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 Phil Lesh. You know that we we. Uh, uh, Bill Payne, all those guys from Little Feet, uh, Yorma and Jack. Yeah, th these are musical heroes of ours that we've come to know and have become like family to us. And, and, um, and every one of them um, uh, matches their talent with their, their heart and personality. You know, that's a, that's a great thing. You know, having at our house here, um, when we first moved in here, we were able a couple of times to to host a get together here and and you know come like, on we, i threw a birthday party for that's you that's right yeah, <laughs> there you go. it looks very homey yeah and, I, and, I and you uh, want to have some people over rob yeah. and i thinking like you know 10 or 12 people around the table and he invited like 70 people yeah right yeah <laughs> but that you know all our our musical friends happy traum uh levon john sebastian and uh donald fagan uh you know, uh, just people around here locally. And, and uh, that was a great time because all we did was hang and play music together. And, and that's what used to happen years ago at Happy Traum's house here. Um, uh, that was the gathering place for all the musicians around Woodstock. And, um, um, uh, you know, where where you just get together because you love to play music and, and uh, yeah, is that what attracted you to live up there? Because Woodstock is such a hub for musicians. Like, there's tons of it is. them there. Yeah, well, we were. I I think Larry had such a history there from going up there. What in the late seventies, Larry, with yeah. Woodstock Mountain Review. Right. And and yeah. then 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 for us, by the time we he actually got a house there, we were reverse commuting to work with Levon every week. So it kind of became practical for us to Yeah, we were coming up from Manhattan every every weekend, you know, and, 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 I, and I always had it in the back of my head since I first came up here in the late 70s to, wouldn't it be great to have an apartment in Manhattan and a house in Woodstock? That was the goal, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and, and we were finally able to do it, you know, and, and um, uh, this is, I, I love this town. Levon loved this place. It's a place where musicians can be people and musicians, you know, where you can just hang and be normal and 
and and still play music and, and uh, oh yeah, you know. I went to college in New Paltz. I mean, we could do oh, that's right. yeah. we could do a whole other show just on that's right, that's <laughs> right, Robin, that's right. Yeah, it's a great, great, great town. So tell me what each of you get out of performing together. How would you describe it? Huh. Who's going to go first? <laughs> you can go, Larry. Well, I, I think I just have to go back to what I said before, which was the fulfillment aspect of it. It's when we're on stage, I'm playing the guitar, she's singing, we're singing together. Uh, it's like, okay, this is this is exactly where I'm supposed to be doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. This is the path that I walked or ran or fell down or stumbled through my whole life <laughs> has, has been so I could get right here. And um, uh, it's, it's, I, I, I have to say, I really have never had such a sense of fulfillment, you know? And, then, and I, I, I know when they, um, the little blurb, and I don't know if Mark Muskowitz wrote this or not. I'm sorry, I've told him this anyway. If he did, they say in the little Amazon blurb that uh, you know we pack up our marriage and um, to uh, uh, take it on the road and um, make it. <laughs> you know, so I forgot how it reads exactly, but we we go on the road to make it, and I'm like. That's really disgusting. <laughs> it's not to make. I feel like we've we have. I mean, Larry has made it. I've made. You know, we're we've made it in the way that we wanted to make it. And and I said, if you would just say that they go on the road to make music together, <laughs> or to make music, but it to make it is not play into it. It's uh, and I think if I don't know, I just I just don't like that. And and I'll tell you, working together is is the most intimate playing music together, doing harmonies together is very intimate thing yeah, to do. It does, it comes through so much in this series. It was the music. Thank you so much guys for joining me. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, you're it's great. It's a pleasure. Robert, really. Yeah, yeah. It's a pleasure to meet you. I hope we get to shake your hand one of these days. Absolutely, I want, I want more than that. I want a hug. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and you show me a sign. And I'll be willing to be. Always new. Always refreshing. Always candid. Always billing about. Robin Milling delivers what celebrities are saying to you. To you. To you.